nervous system of a mammal comprise the central nervous system or CNS consisting of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system or PNS consisting of the cranial nerve from the brain, the spinal nerve from the spinal cord and the sense organ. According to the Campbell, the membrane potential is the difference in electrical charge across a cell plasma membrane due to the differential distribution of ions. The resting potential is the membrane potential characteristic of a non-conducting excitable cell with the inside of the cell more negative than the outside. A resting potential is the difference in charge which exists between the inside and the outside of the cell membrane. In an excitable cell, the resting potential is about negative 70 mV. The negative sign indicates the interior of the cell is negative with respect to the exterior environment. Potassium ion and the sodium ions play a critical role in the formation of the resting potential. For each, there is a concentration gradient across the plasma membrane of a neuron. The resting potential difference across the neuron membrane is maintained by the sodium potassium pump, which is always working. Three sodium ions are actively transported out of the cell for every two potassium ions pumped into the cell. Energy supplied by ATP is used for the transport of ions against their electrochemical gradient. The axon membrane is more permeable to potassium ions than the sodium ions. This is due to the presence of more potassium ion non gated voltage independent channel and fused to sodium ion non gated channel. More potassium ion can diffuse out back again faster than sodium ion can diffuse back in. An action potential is generated when the voltage reaches a certain critical point. An action potential is sometimes called a spike because of its spike-like recorded appearance. The threshold level value is the lowest level of stimulus that will trigger an action potential. When a stimulus opens some voltage-gated sodium channel and causes that sodium potassium pump to stop functioning, Sodium inflow through those channels depolarize the membrane, causing the charge within the axon become slightly relatively positive. The change in the electrical potential is called depolarization. An actual potential has a depolarization phase and a repolarization phase. There may be a short high-polarized phase after the repolarization phase. In this video, I'm going to explain an action potential. An action potential, or a nerve impulse, causes a movement of ions across the cell membrane of a neuron, similar to a ripple passing along the surface of a pond. The cell membrane of a neuron contains thousands of tiny molecules known as channels. These channels allow either sodium or potassium ions to pass through. Generally, the channels on a neuron are closed and the membrane is said to be in a resting state. In this state, the charge of the inside of the cell membrane is more negative than the outside. And if you could imagine sticking microelectrode connected to a voltmeter inside this membrane, the reading would show about negative 70 millivolt, meaning that the inside of the neuron is about 70 millivolt less than the outside. The cell membrane of a neuron is polarized because of this electrical difference across the membrane. Now, a nerve impulse starts when pressure or other sensory inputs disturbs a neuron's plasma membrane to the point that the potential difference reaches a threshold voltage of about negative 55 millivolt. This causes hundreds of sodium channels in that region of the membrane to open briefly. This in turn allows positively charged sodium ions to flow inside the cell membrane. Now, the inside of the membrane temporarily becomes more positive than the outside which in turn causes the voltage to rise. This is called depolarized state. The membrane is now depolarized because the net charge inside the axon changed from negative to positive as sodium ions entered in. 
as the impulse passes, the potassium channels begin to open, allowing positively charged potassium ions to flow out, which causes inside of the axon to resume a net negative charge. At this point, the voltage would fall. The membrane is now said to be repolarized because again, it's negatively charged on the inside and positively charged on the outside. Now, this depolarization and repolarization of a neuron membrane is called an action potential. Action potential is just another name for a nerve impulse. After a nerve impulse, some voltage-gated potassium channels remain open resulting in further movement of potassium out of the cell. As the voltage falls below the reading of the resting state, the membrane is said to be hyperpolarized because it's even more negative than at the beginning. At this stage, neuron is unable to conduct a nerve impulse and it's said to be in the refractory period. The refractory period is a very short period during which the sodium-potassium pump continues to return sodium ions to the outside and potassium ions to the inside of the axon, thus returning the neuron to resting potential. So in summary, an actual potential is just a wave of depolarization and repolarization. It's not an electric current. It's just a series of voltage-gated ions channels opened and closed. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. And hopefully, I made it wicked easy to understand. Next we will be discuss the characteristics of nerve impulse. Number one, all or none event, the refractory period, and the speed of conduction. All or none event, when a stimulus that is strong enough to depolarize the membrane to the threshold level result in the transmission of an impulse along the axon. An actual potential is an all or none event because either it occurs or it does not occur. The size of the action potential is constant, that is, it is not affected by the intensity of the stimulus. The amplitude of the action potential are constant. Refractory period is the short period immediately after an action potential in which the neuron cannot respond to another stimulus. This is the period when the neuron is insensitive to depolarization, that is, the inward movement of sodium ion is prevented. The refractory period can be divided into two parts, absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. Absolute refractory period, when the period immediately after the repolarization phase of an action potential. The axon membrane cannot transmit another action potential no matter how intense the stimulus. This lasts for 1 millisecond. Relative refractory period, this happens after the absolute refractory period when the axon can transmit new impulse if the stimulus is more intense than normally required. This lasts for 5 millisecond. The speed of conduction of an actual potential along a neuron is influenced by the following factors. It depends on presence of myelin sheets and the diameter of axon. Presence of myelin sheets cause an action potential cannot form in the part of the axon covered with myelin but it can form at the node of Ranvier. This is because ion movement across the membrane occurs only at the nodes. Hence, the action potential jump from one node of Ranvier to another along the axon. This increases the speed at which the action potential is conducted. This type of conduction is called saltatory conduction. The larger the diameter of the axon, the faster the speed of conduction of the action potential. This is because the smaller the diameter, the greater the resistance offered by the exoplasm and the lower the speed of conduction of the action potential. The synapse is the junction where a neuron communicates with another cell across the narrow gap. It's located at the site of contact between two neurons. Neuron that transmit impulse to the synapse is called presynaptic neuron. 
Neuron that carry impulse away from synapse is called postsynaptic neuron. Both neuron are separated. There are two types of synapse: electrical synapse and the chemical synapse. Electrical synapse consists of pre and postsynaptic membrane are very close together, no synaptic cleft and no neurotransmitter. It allows electrical current to flow directly from one neuron to another. While in chemical synapse, there is more common. Pre and presynaptic membrane are separated by a synaptic cleft. Involve the release of chemical neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. The presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron are separated by a gap of about 20 nanometers called the synaptic cleft. Small swelling at the terminal of a neuron are called synaptic the cytoplasm in the synaptic knot contains numerous mitochondria and synaptic vesicles. There are two main neurotransmitters used in the vertebrate nervous system as are acetylcholine and noepinephrine. The presynaptic membrane is the membrane of terminal axon nearest to the synaptic cleft. While in the postsynaptic membrane is the thickened membrane of the dendrite a cell body of another neuron. There are many of ligand gated ion channels found on the postsynaptic membrane. They have specific receptors for the neurotransmitter substances. It allows the movement of ions into the postsynaptic neuron. Next video we show you the mechanism of synaptic transmission across the synapse. Communication between neurons and communication between neurons and muscle occurs at specialized junctions called synapses. The most common type of synapse is the chemical synapse. Here, we examine the events that take place at the neuromuscular junction, a chemical synapse using the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Synaptic transmission begins when the nerve impulse reaches the presynaptic axon terminal. Depolarization of the presynaptic membrane initiates the sequence of events leading to transmitter release and activation of receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. Shown here are the principal molecules and organelles necessary for release of neurotransmitter. Synaptic vesicles exist in distinct pools, either tethered to the cytoskeleton in a reserve pool or free in the cytoplasm. Some of the free vesicles make their way to the plasma membrane and dock as a series of priming reactions prepares the vesicular and plasma membranes for fusion. The membranes of the synaptic vesicles are drawn together via protein complexes, collectively called snares, that are expressed on the vesicle and presynaptic membrane. When the axon terminal is depolarized, voltage-gated calcium channels open and calcium ions rush into the axon terminal. Some of the calcium ions bind to a protein on the synaptic vesicle membrane called synaptotagmin. When calcium binds to synaptotagmin on the synaptic vesicles nearest the active zone, the vesicles are drawn even closer to the presynaptic membrane. The vesicles fuse with the axon terminal membrane and release their transmitter cargo into the synaptic cleft. Some of the transmitter molecules bind to special receptor molecules in the postsynaptic membrane. The response of the postsynaptic cell, either excitation or inhibition, depends upon the particular neurotransmitter and receptor combination. For example, the receptor for acetylcholine is permeable to sodium. After binding acetylcholine, the channel opens and sodium ions enter the postsynaptic cell thereby generating an excitatory postsynaptic response. Transmitters are inactivated or removed rapidly from the synaptic cleft so that transmission is brief and accurately follows the presynaptic input signal. For acetylcholine, an enzyme in the synaptic cleft, acetylcholinesterase, breaks down acetylcholine into choline and acetate. The release of transmitter from the receptors causes the channels to close. Not all transmitters are broken down by enzymes in the synaptic cleft. Many transmitters are rapidly cleared from the synaptic cleft 
by being taken up into the presynaptic terminal by special proteins called transporters. This process is known as reuptake. Reuptake not only cuts off the synaptic activity promptly, but also allows the terminal to recycle transmitter molecules. The membrane needed for creating synaptic vesicles is also recycled via endocytosis of the presynaptic membrane. The recycled vesicles are refilled with neurotransmitter molecules and are ready for another round of synaptic transmission. Next learning outcome is to compare the transmission of impulse across synapse and along the axon. The similarity, the diffusion of sodium across the membrane is needed for both impulse transmission across the synapse and impulse transmission along the axon. Comparison of impulse transmission across the synapse and along the axon. The differences in synapse, impulse is chemically transmitted while in axon, impulse is electrically transmitted. In synapse, involve the neurotransmitter substances and in axon, no neurotransmitter substances are involved. In synapse, impulse transmission is lower because the neurotransmitter need to diffuse across the synaptic cleft. While in the axon, impulse transmission is very fast. In synapse, involve the diffusion of calcium into the synaptic knob to activate the vesicle, while in axon, calcium ions are not involved. Our last learning outcome is to explain the mechanism of action of drug. Cocaine affects the brain limbic system, which is a part of pleasure center. In the absence of cocaine, limbic system releases dopamine as a neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Dopamine binds to the receptor on the postnatic membrane and stimulate the feeling of euphoria. Cocaine specifically binds to dopamine reuptake pumps and blocks their ability to remove dopamine from the synaptic cleft. Dopamine levels remain high, binding the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron and triggering continuous nerve impulse stimulation. Over time, in response to this hyperactivity, the postsynaptic cells begin to cut back on the number of dopamine receptors present at their surface. When cocaine is no longer present in the system, reuptake pumps are restored to function and dopamine levels in the synapse return to normal. However, with fewer receptors for dopamine on the postsynaptic cell, Normal pleasure signals are weakened and the sensation of enjoyment is dulled. This physiological response offers a tangible explanation for the reality of chemical addiction and the agony of withdrawal.